Hey folks, yesterday Procalc University brought you a video that talked about four to 500 square foot per ton and about how bad that is to use that as a rule of thumb. Well, just like a lot of other videos here on YouTube, well, people can just blah, blah, blah and say anything they want. However, in this video today, using WriteSoft software, I'm gonna show you how dramatically certain windows and high efficiency insulation can actually change that. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you like the video, don't forget to click like and or subscribe to the Pro Couch University channel. And away we go. Calx University. You don't know what you don't know. Hey folks, Tom Platini here with Calx University. And uh, yesterday I talked about four to 500 square foot per ton and how those issues are caused. Well, today I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. You know, there's a lot of people out there that can talk about how things should be or why they should be or shouldn't be. But today I'm going to actually show you using a software that we use at Procalx called WriteSoft. Uh, now, WriteSoft, anybody can pretty much purchase WriteSoft, but to truly be a master of the software takes a lot of practice. And I know a lot of HVAC guys who buy the software and throw some stuff in there and manipulate the numbers. And I'm going to show you how actually easy that is to manipulate the system. So what we have here is we have just a standard house. It's about 1,900 square feet. Um, and... What, what we're going to look at is right now I have it set to single pane windows um, and I'll show you where, where that's located. So if I click on a window here, you can see what my values are and you can see that I have it an operable window, metal with no break, clear, eighth inch glass, single pane. So that's what all the windows are set up to. Um, over here when you're looking at the ceiling, I actually have the ceiling set to asphalt shingles. It's vented with R30 insulation with 5H gypsum. I got a medium color outside on the, the roof deck. Let's, let's change that to uh, a dark color. Maybe you got black shingles on your roof. So um, walls, we have just a standard block wall with R5 insulation. Uh, now, the other key that we have to look at is, is our ductwork. So we have our ductwork listed in a vented attic with asphalt shingles, dark. And we have an average ceiling, which means the ductwork is sealed, just kind of average. Uh, now, when we look at these factors, we come over here and we look at our load. And loads are based on BTUs, British thermal units. And we have sensible load, which is what changes the temperature in the house. And we have our latent load, which is humidity. It's moisture in the air. And if we want to find out the total capacity of this system, of what this house needs, not of the system, but what the house it need, needs itself to properly uh, be conditioned, or how much air conditioning is needed to remove the heat that's coming in through the windows, the walls, the roof, the ceiling, even internally, we want to know what that is. So if we take that 37,652 and we add it to the 5379, we come up with 43,031, which is just above a three and a half ton system because it's approximately 12, 11 to 12,000 BTUs per ton, depending on the manufacturer. Typically, the 12,000 BTU is, is what a true ton uh, is calculated at, but not all manufacturers get true tonnage. So this is 43,000. So this is over a three and a half ton system. So Unless something were to change, we would end up having to go to a four-ton system in a house that's that's only 18, 1900 square foot. Well, if we're talking four to five hundred square foot per ton, man, we're we're not far off. We're we're right there. But that's not realistic in today's world. In today's world, windows are typically not going to be single pane. This I mean, because this is so far above code you wouldn't even pass the energy code uh, if you put a window in like that. It, it, it would pretty much almost be impossible. So in order for us to do this, we want to look at what, what would be code minimum 
on the windows. So, and it, it doesn't necessarily matter whether it's single pane or double pane or triple pane. The numbers that we're truly looking for are these values right here, the U value and the SHGC. And when I change those to code minimum, and let's just use the code that's in Florida. If, if we're in uh, northern states, these values are slightly different. In the northern states, your U factor, your U value is much more important than your SHGC. In southern locations, the SHGC, which is the solar heat gain coefficient, is much more important. So let's just put that code minimum in there. Now look at this over here, what happened. We want from just by changing the windows alone, nothing else. We went from 43,000, and now we're down to, let's calculate this out. We're down to 32,000. That's over a ton of air conditioning. Or, or, yeah, over a ton of air conditioning that, um, or pretty close to it, that we, we dropped just by changing the windows. So if, if you're trying to meet the minimum code in your, in your state and you put better windows in, what, what are we at now? We're at 1,900 square foot when we have a barely a three-ton system. We're at 32,000 BTUs. So, you know, if we're at 1,900 square foot and we divide that by three, we're at 633 uh, square foot per ton, almost 634. So we're slowly moving further away. Okay, look at, let's look at some of the other things that we can change. What if we changed the roof? Okay, so let's do what we'll call this as a global change. allows us to change it quickly. And we go on to the ceiling, and we're going to change this ceiling to encapsulate it. Now watch this picture over here. I'm not going to have any ceiling insulation, and I'm going to go ahead and put R20, which is pretty much a standard for spray foam. And notice it goes on the underside of the roof deck. And what that does is it stops the heat from getting into the attic. If you've watched a couple of other of my videos, I actually show some really good graphics on that. But the temperature inside the attic is much cooler. In fact, it's usually only about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the inside temperature of the home. So we changed that. Now, notice it didn't make that big of a difference, but it did make a little difference. Well, here's, here's where the biggest difference comes into play. It dropped about 1,000 BTUs. Here's where the biggest difference comes into play is the ductwork because the ductwork was in the attic before when we had ceiling insulation it can't get up to 140 degrees up there so if i click on my ductwork and now i change my ductwork to encapsulated attic watch what happens to this number wow it goes down even more so we're now at 21.35 and 53.9. We're all the way down to 26,500 BTUs, and we were at 43.015. That's 16,500 BTUs difference from where we were at just by making some basic modifications in our home. And again, this just goes to show that, yes, in some instances, just like that broken clock, four to 500 square foot per ton could possibly be the right thing. But with the construction values that are required today, that just isn't going to happen. And we, like I said, we do, we do approximately 100 calculations a month, and, and we're we're very truthful about the information that we put in there. In fact, we, we have a form that we use, and this form is very detailed. And what it does is it gathers the information from the client so that we can make sure. I mean, yes, it looks complicated and detailed. We have it broken out where it has all the questions there for you. But everything that's on this paper is relevant to making sure that your heating and air conditioning load calculations, your manual J, are accurate and that they are properly calculated. And when we're looking at, well, well Tom, how, 
what's the temperature that you're set for? Well, if I go into my project information page and I choose my location, here's the weather location. You can see now we have 2017 that has just recently been added. So we click on 2017. The 1% is where we're going to set it based on ASHRAE, ACA, and a lot of uh, Energy Star. And what this tells us, is, yes, is it go in this area, Vero Beach, Florida, is it going to get hotter than 91 degrees? Yes, it is. And what, what we look at, and I'm going to click on this other Vero Beach so that I can show you this bin data. This bin data is the actual hours. There's 8,760 hours in a year. And this shows you the actual amount of hours based on that, those dates and the numbers as to how hot it was and for how many hours. Now look, if it's 95 to, to 99, it was only five hours for the entire year. So why would I size my air conditioning system to control at 95 degrees outside when it's only there for five hours? Because then that means for everything under that, every degree under that, your air conditioning system is going to be oversized. It doesn't mean that when it gets to 95 degrees, the system is not going to properly condition. It's just going to run a little longer in order to control that if it's installed correctly. And that's very important. And if you're interested, uh, give me a uh, contact me through uh, uh, YouTube or you can go to tomatprocalx.net and you can ask a request. We actually have a document where your HVAC technician can fill it out and it'll tell you exactly what the capacity of your system is running after it's installed. All right, folks. Well, this was a follow-up to the video that I did yesterday. They talked about why four to 500 square foot per ton is just not the rule of thumb you should use. Actually have a proper heat loss, heat gain calculation done to make sure that you have the right size system in your home. Have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and to the ProCalc University channel if you liked it. Have a great day. ProCalc University. You don't know what you don't know.